remove these caps four in total two on each side and the side of the light and with an 8mm socket remove these two bolts disconnect the plug from its little hoses on here and you just pop that clip there and that will allow the plug to slide off there's no need to take the tape off the plug just simply press there and that will release your plug and allow you to take the light off there's two raw plug style uh, fixings one goes there one goes there and then you need to remove all of these along the bottom of the bumper all the way along this will release this bar here and I think this is something to do with the boot opening mechanism I'm not sure it appears to be some sort of coax aerial well anyway undrew every fixing across the bottom of the bumper There's four of those uh, push raw plug style things again in here. So there's two there, two there. Once those are out, you can pull you in a liner down. And this will enable you to get this off easier. We need to get this off to get to the bolts that are under here. Once you can get inside the wheel arch, you need to pull this trim back to get to that bolt there. So from inside the wheel arch, just use a set of pliers and gently squeeze the sides of these clips in from inside the wheel arch and it'll come off a lot easier and you won't be breaking clips you just need enough movement just enough movement on the trim to get to that bolt undo your pin there and a pin there and the same on the other side you will need to undo many, many sensors underneath the car, depending on your model. This one's got uh, rear parking sensors and blind spot sensors and 360 perimeter detection. So you see all these, you're just gonna have to go along the back of your vehicle. Easing off clips, being careful how you do it. I didn't find these too bad. Um, Perhaps because the car's new. But just go across the car, undoing all the clips as you go. And the same on the other side of the car. So after these two bolts are undone, and you've undone the bolt there, you need to gently lift the bumper to unhook it off these hooks. This requires quite a bit of patience if it's your own car. It's easy to damage the paint down here or snap the little clips in here. So they just simply lift and pull out slightly as you go. This is the tow bar. I purchased it second hand off eBay. Uh, it was listed as a new other. Um, as we can see, it really hasn't been used. I mean, that ball hasn't been marked at all. It's me who sprayed it with a, a bit of smooth right just before it went under the car, uh, which wasn't necessary, but when you're fitting it to your own vehicle, um, you see it's all still got, I mean, it's even still got the paper labels on. So, um, so yeah, really, really scored a good hit with this. Undo the four bolts there, four bolts there, remove the rear slam panel. So we can see now this is completely detached from the vehicle. Uh, there are, um, I forgot to say on the previous one, an additional um, clip just on the inside of here. 
the little raw plug type ones um, just holds it additional to the four there is another one so you'll need to remove that as well um, I'm not moving the bumper back anymore because I've left the main loom into the rear bumper connected um, I always try to avoid taking things apart that I don't need to when it comes to electrics because there's little rubber seals in there and you don't know if you get some grit in or it's been like that since the car's made admittedly the car's only six months old but um, it's still best not to take looms apart that you don't have to The tow bar simply slides into the holes here. Um, this sensor here is your keyless entry sensor. Um, I'm hoping to get away without moving that, but we will see. Just a bit of electrics we need to connect. And this is the 13 pin. the little uh, motor of the uh, electric tow bar and then these two go into the boot this is obviously the gland as it goes through the boot this does lend itself to helping you. I haven't actually got the instructions for the tow bar, but you can see we've been given these holes. And these holes obviously have these push fittings for the cable to go on. And they're set at exactly the right distance, as they're straight off the production line, I suppose. And this led me to find out where this gland went. This gland is actually in the correct place and stuck onto the loom. And it simply goes up in here on a little bung there. And that's where we're going to come through the boot. But we've got to actually come through this hole here in the boot. So to assist yourself with the fishing, Take off your vent and then you can see inside to where we're going. We've got a bit of soundproofing in here so we can work from underneath the vehicle here, fish through here and out into the boot. Bar's just loosely pushed in for now. I've put the clips on in the holes that are already in the bar. This has got to be connected yet to the motor. There's the motor plug there. And that clips then by a little stud on the inside of the bar here. I've left this hanging at the moment because I'm unsure where these go. I know some go along the tow hitch but then we have additional ones here, I'm not too sure where they go. So until we get the tow hitch down, I won't know. That goes along there. Under there. And then pops out through there. There's a clip here, which I haven't used yet because I don't know where it goes. Whether it goes on the vertical face or the horizontal face. So just before putting the bumper back on, I'll show you the fixings. So one there, one there, down to here. So basically everything down that inner of the bumper is taken off. You've got your fixing here, fixing there. Simply on clips from those on the back there. Then you have your fixings here. wheel arch. So that's the same on both sides and it just simply lifts off. This is the next part. I uh, bought this off eBay from Rates Ford. 
the uh, previous lead that I showed you with the 13 pin plug on that I had to buy from uh, a main dealer uh, and it cost me £65 which is criminal really for what you've got uh, but what you're going to do about it you need the plugs on it you need uh, you need the connections um, don't know the wire colours so you're stuck you're stuck really um, so this one now is the main loom uh, bought it on eBay rates forward uh, and it cost me about £50 I think anyway whatever it cost it was about £25 under what the main dealers were charging um, so yeah really really good service off rates for it I tend to book quite a bit off them now so there's the serial numbers for that and this actually comes with some instructions this one so we've got a few bits and pieces to do here to pull this rear cover off it is simply just a series of clips and you go round, just gently pulling them off. There are no screws. It's all these clips all the way around. You don't have to disconnect the seat belt. Just leave it hanging. What you do have to disconnect is the 12 volt. Uh, what's that one? Yeah, your 12 volt for your cigarette lighter auxiliary socket and um, your rear light. So it starts here by basically saying take your carpet out, take your rear cover off. I didn't actually have to do that on mine. I managed to fish those wires through without doing that. But we'll see yet. Um, take your wheel arch liner out. I haven't done that yet either. Parcel shelf. And then just basically like I said pull everything off the side. The carpet here and the top section here is one piece. Don't try and pull them two apart. This is the, the trailer module that's required. Again, from Rates Ford on eBay. So much cheaper than where you get in the dealers. If you put these two clips here, they come in the kit. And we're going to mount that there with the bolts that also come in the kit. This lead comes in the kit and needs to be assembled using this plug but you may need more items depending on your car. Here it's telling us to look at number four. This is for, if you have this tab here, this is on some of the higher model cars, then you complete steps 5 to 13. If you don't have that tab there, which is like a copper strip, you need to do, you need that additional part, which I'd imagine is that tab, and you need to miss out step 9. For me, I have that tab just there so I have this model here so I need to do all steps I'd imagine that gives you the tab if you buy that part number so we need to assemble this lead this lead is now assembled by just simply pushing the contacts in and it seems to give us uh, an output from a single one from the fuse to a twin outlet. Just simply divides one into two. Undo that there and then pull this away. And what we need to do now is insert the prong from the rear. That is now inserted into the back of the block, that one there. And we now have two terminals there. Cut the old cable tie that's at the neck of the uh, fuse board and put yourself a new cable tie on holding the new lead that you've just fitted. The cable tie is in the kit. Next we've been told to mount this um, speaker, uh, sounder, whatever, 
Um, I have chosen to skip the canvas sections at the moment, uh, mainly because it's raining and I'm currently working in the boot. But uh, all we've come up to so far is simply how to thread the canvas wires, which loom to cut into. We've done that section just then. And we're now going to fit the speaker. We'll come to the cam bus wires in a minute when I can get the doors open and it's not pouring down with rain. The speaker now mounted. Just simply sticks on with some tape. It's now telling us to start connecting the main loom. That there is an additional module um, and that's for the swivel of the uh, tow bar. That is this here. Um, I paid uh, again off rates forward, uh, who I can't praise enough. Uh, incidentally, I'm not affiliated with them, had discount or anything of the sort. These are just eBay items. Um, again, £20 cheaper than everywhere else, but it still costs 60 quid. So expensive little fella. Um, these part numbers are at the start of the instructions. Just there. So, um, that one there is your trailer module. That one there is the swivel module for the uh, tow bar. So that's a little module. Um, it's got some Velcro on the other side, some double bit of sticky tape and some Velcro. And according to the instructions, that mounts here somewhere. So we'll do that now. Right, according to the instructions, it's telling us there's an earth point there, which is just above this brace here. And we need to connect the earth next. That's our centre wire that we've just put in the centre one. I'll put it in the centre. This is all one piece here and that will stop it when we tighten it going from side to side and spinning round and damaging the wire. It's right up inside that trim there. So this wire's in there. And we're just going to let this hang for now. So we started to connect the lower, there's the um, tow bar module, We've connected the two lower multi-pin plugs, come in from earlier, we've got to put these two fuses on, they click onto the top of here and onto the bottom of there, so we need to attach those onto there. We then need to take this wire earlier that we did earlier and it goes up round here and we need to connect it to this one here. This will then make this live and that one goes in there like that. We still haven't come to the canvas one yet because it's still raining. So the fuses just simply click on here and on there and you don't have to take the module off again, you just simply push those on. We're now taking this wire up to here and that's going to be mounted there. And this one that we did earlier will connect to that one. The 33mm uh, hole in there with a little cut out at the bottom to stop this spinning. 
I used a um, step drill for that, which luckily had a 33 on it, which is unusual. So we're all done in here now. Put your quality bit of insulation back in. Time to back up. Um, can bus is in, earth of the can bus is up to here. Uh, the excess of can bus is here. Um, I didn't want to cut it because Ford made it that long, there might be a resistance reason. I have absolutely no idea, but we're not going to cut that short. So I simply took that all the way along the car to the front of the car, which is where we'll pick up in a minute. So just follow the main loom all the way along. Um, I find these quite poor, these two fuses, because upon doing the cover, um, you'll never see those again. You'll actually have to remove the cover to get to those fuses if ever they blew, which is quite an inconvenience if it's on the side of the road or your boot's full of luggage. When I've done tow bars in the past and canvas tow bars, uh, I've always used General Electrics, even the Mondeo, the previous car. He took it up to here. He used these ports, he took wires, like we did with that one, into the back of here. Um, so I find that quite poor. And uh, yeah. Put the 40 amp fuse in there. Put the main 12 volt battery still off. I've ran the wires through to the uh, driver's side. This is a right hand vehicle, driver's side. Uh, footwell as per the instructions. Um, I know you can sometimes pick them up in the boot near where we were working under that cover um, but I had a quick look and I couldn't find them plus I wasn't too interested in deviating from the instructions because I've got to go to a dealer to get this turned on and they would just love it if a little DIYer had cocked up. So um, I've just simply, uh, one thing I haven't done as per the instructions is use crimps. I would never crimp a CAN bus system. Um, it's soldered and uh, heat shrink. So I'm gonna power the car up now, make sure it all works. Um, I don't expect the rear sensors to turn off. I don't expect some of the lights to work. Uh, but what we don't want is uh, lots of errors and a car that doesn't start for work until I can get to the dealership to get this turned on. Uh, this simply goes up, all your trunking all the way along. So there you go. Um, quick look at the instructions. There you go, those are the wires I've cut. Alright, we're all back together now. Um, but I have upgraded the boot lighting. Uh, I mean, that is just shocking. Uh, if you, like me, need your tools a lot. Um, this is normally tools all the way across here, telescopic ladders, all sorts. That is rubbish at five o'clock in the morning. Um, so I've upgraded it under here, um, which is these here. Um, they cost me £1.99 from China for the two, uh, 30 days wait. But um, I bought four of them with the intention of putting some over the other side, but um, it, it's too fiddly. I, I find that that's in fact a better light and more in keeping with the LED lights already on the car and the tail um, than that horrible warm yellow. Um, you don't have to make any drill holes, any alterations, anything to the car you simply feed it through the vents at the bottom and I piggybacked onto the light here I made no alterations to the forward wiring nothing that they could say I'd been fiddling with the car I just piggybacked exactly where the bulb fits in um, and like I say they're just simply stuck on with double-sided sticky tape so it could be put back exactly right fitment uh, it's not plugged in now it's not been programmed or the canvas has been done so simply all that happens is noise press again and it's meant to drop and the tow bar's not we get uh, an unhappy tone um so yeah hopefully after it's programmed we should get a tow bar drop in
So this is on with the two uh, five mil pins, a bit of copper grease. So programming the tow bar didn't take long. Um, they initially programmed the uh, ECU that it had a tow bar, which was fine, um, and that made the socket work and the sensors do their business and the stuff that it does with the fog lamp where it turns off the rear fog lamp on the car but keeps the trailer one on. So it was all that, but what they didn't do was actually program the module, the uh, trailer module, um, that it had a, an electric tow bar which uh, requires it to swing out when the car's doing certain things and in safe positions. Um, so the tow bar didn't swing down. But uh, not for one minute did they blame me and the DIY electrics, which I respect them for. They took the car back in and admitted that they'd never programmed the module, um, which, which is fair enough, you can't moan at that. Um, so there we go, all good, fully operational. The keyless entry sensor was uh, removed from that uh, upright plate that was round about here. The upright plate staying in position though um, and I simply mounted the sensor here uh, which is where they seem to be when I looked at other people's and that was just simply held on with a cable tie here and it sits quite nicely and rests on the motor. So that's where that ended up. Once you get your uh, tow bar operational you can put on the rest of the clips that you couldn't previously get to and that go round the motor here you can get all those on <laughs> 